the uh, book of Acts chapter chapter 12. Uh, we've, we've been teaching uh, for, for several months in this, in this particular chapter. We know for those of you just, that are just uh, tuning in with us, we know that the book of Acts is a book just solid with a lot of a lot of action. I often tell people that uh, that I love action packed movies because the unique thing about action packed movies is that uh, it's hard to go to sleep. Um, I've often go to movies with my wife and uh, and uh, she nudges me on the shoulder uh, on the. Uh, and basically tell me to, you know, wake up because <laughs> I've fallen asleep on a movie, but action-packed movies is just full of excitement. And the and the book of Acts is like that. It's just full of excitement. There's a lot of things going on, a lot of moving parts, and you have to read it very carefully to gain uh, better, better and greater, greater understanding, understanding from it. We're going to begin at chapter 12. We know that the, the book of Acts uh, is comprised of the 12 apostles uh, that, uh, that Jesus released upon the earth. And their primary role and purpose was to uh, turn the world upside down uh, for Jesus Christ by spreading the good news of Jesus all over, all over our land. And and that that charge has not stopped with them. That charge is is to us as well. And we know, uh, unlike in the United States, but there are certain parts of the world. Well, if you share the good news of Jesus Christ, uh, if they, they hear you talking about Jesus, that persecution will come upon you, and in some cases, they will uh, they will take your life. They will take your life. And we, we're get, going to get a glimpse of that in this, in this uh, passage of scripture here. But, uh, but one of the neat things that we are going to discover here is that so often when we pray, so often when we pray, we don't believe that God will answer our prayer. We pray, and we pray because we know we need to pray but we don't believe that God will answer our prayer. But uh, so oftentimes when we pray and God answer our prayer, we're like, shock. Well, this is the very thing that you've been praying for. And, and, and so that's what we are, that's what we are going to, that's what we're going to discover uh, in this, in this passage of, of scripture that we begin to read. We're, we're going to discover that, that why, while the believers were praying that God was moving, why the believers were praying that God was moving, and so you're gonna you're gonna uh, catch this as it as it as it unfold. Another piece before we get there, I do want to highlight in every opportunity that I get. If you've been listening to any of the teachings, every opportunity that I get, I like to share with the people of God that. That God, uh, that God strategically utilizes angels, and uh, and He utilizes angels to one uh, 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 bring forth His message, and secondly, He utilizes angels to do supernatural things. But when God chose to utilize angels, He needs He needs accuracy, He needs precision. And he needs a commitment to move as he instruct the person to move. And often when God speaks to our heart, he tells us to do certain things. We ponder it. We, you know, we, we ponder it. We, 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 we think about it and we wait a little while and then we act. But God, but God wants us, God wants us as people of God to respond when he says, for us to respond. And that's what we're going to see uh, what's happening in this passage of, of scripture here. Again, we are uh, we are at Acts chapter 12, Acts tw chapter 12, and we are going to be looking at uh, a, a story about the Apostle Peter. 
And we know of Peter being the one that uh, did, uh, did something that no one else has ever done before. Uh, you can talk about Peter all day long, but Peter was the guy that when he saw Jesus walking on the water and he, he kind of looked at Jesus and said, wow, that's a cool thing to walk on the water. And Jesus said, you can come on out here with me. And Peter listened to Jesus and he walked, Peter actually walked on the water to Jesus. Now, now many, many uh, speaks negative of, of Peter about Peter taking his eyes off of Jesus and, and practically drowning, but nobody else was willing to, to step out of the boat and walk toward Jesus, but that of Peter. That's what we're going to uh, read about to this, 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 this evening. Look with me at uh, chapter 12, beginning at verse, chapter 12, beginning at verse 1. The scripture says it was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw this, when he, when he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This was happened during the festive of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads, four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. Now, what we what we see uh, so far here, we know that the uh, the apostles were there, and they were they were preaching uh, a, a message of Jesus Christ. They were preaching a message of Jesus Christ. And, and as a result of their preaching, uh, one, was, uh, one was killed. And when it was time for them to deal with Peter, they came into a, 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 a holy Passover, which required that they would not work. And, uh, and so they, they secured him, they, they put him in jail, and they assigned a great number of guards to actually guard him. Why was Peter arrested? That's a question for you all. Why did they arrest Peter? Uh, for those of you that know a little bit of the story, been following it, why did they arrest Peter? I, I know I mentioned it early on. Can anyone give me an answer to that? Why did they arrest Peter? Got to get one person to respond. <laughs> uh, why did they arrest Peter? They 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 arrested Peter for preaching. The gospel of Jesus Christ. Go, go ahead, my brother. You were saying it. Go ahead. Yeah. So they arrested. They arrested Peter for preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And and there there are numerous of people that uh, that that supported. Uh, that teaching, there are numerous of people that supported the philosophy that because they felt like the the Christian people was evil people that the Christian people were part of this this uh, this occult group known as the Way. We 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 learned last mm. week that mm -mm -mm. that that they went from being told people of the Way to uh, being called. Christians. So that's why they arrested Peter. They didn't arrest Peter for being uh, uh, someone disobeying and being rowdy and rudy and, and, and doing things that he should, but they arrested him for doing God's work. That's, that's why Peter was actually uh, arrested. Now, 
now we get into this, this part here, what we're about to uncover here. You can, you can call it what you want to call it, but it's purely something that happens supernaturally. And we, as people of God, when you pray, it's very important that you believe with all of your heart that God will answer your prayer. You should not pray and not think that God is not answering your prayers. When you go before the Lord this evening in prayer on behalf of yourself and your family, you should believe with all of your heart that God is going to answer your prayers. We must get that in our spirit. Why pray if you don't believe God will answer your prayers? The, the, the Bible says, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you shall find. Knock and the door shall be open. So, so, wow. so prayer is a repetitious thing. It is something that you do over and over and over again. I, I'll never forget this, and I don't. I, I, I'm not sure is my my oldest daughter who's on the line this evening. Who would call me? Out. <laughs> she she um, <laughs> wanted uh, these um, these dolls. There's this there's this uh, boy group back in her era. Uh, the, the name of this group was called NSYNC or something like that. And, uh, and she wanted all, I think it was like four or five members. And, uh, and so she made that request known repeatedly. And so when it was time to get her Christmas present, she wanted these NSYNC dolls. I mean, that, I think it was NSYNC dolls. And so, but the fact that she made her request repeatedly when it was time to go shopping for her Christmas present, all I could hear was her request. And so this is why it's important that when we pray, when we pray, we, we let God know how much we desire what we're requesting. You know, when you, when you ask for something one time and you never mention it, uh, then more than likely, whoever is in a position to make that available to you, uh, probably not going to think about it. But if you're asking repeatedly, 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 and and so what we're going to, what we're about to read in a few minutes, we're we're hearing that the, the church learned that Peter was arrested, and the people of God began to pray. That's right. The people of God begin to pray and pray and pray. And, and, and so we, 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 we're going we're gonna to notice in the scripture here that, that, that God moves on their behalf. God, God moves on their behalf in, uh, in a special way. Uh, verse, verse five. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was doing what? Earnestly doing what? I can't hear you. The church was earnestly doing what? Praying. Praying to God for him. <laughs> That's right. The church was earnestly praying to God for him. So when you do something earnestly, you put everything into it, okay? You do something earnestly, it's, uh, I mean, you're all in. You're not, you're all in. And it's like, Lord, we want you to do something, Lord God. We want you to uh, uh, free our dear brother Peter. They they had heard about one of the others being being killed, being murdered, uh, and so they it, it it appeared that if one of them was already killed for proclaiming the gospel message, and Peter was with them, certainly you would recognize and think that Peter would be next. But there is a Jewish. There was, there was a Jewish holiday that that allowed them to, to not do any work on that holiday, but to celebrate the holiday. So they throw through through Peter in prison. What brings everything to a halt here is that the people of God 
was praying, as verse 5 says. Look at verse 6. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains and bound with two chains and centuries stood guard at the entrance. Now, when they're assigned guards to guard you, you know, it's one thing to put you behind bars, but when they assign guards to guard you, you know, you know they don't want you to get away. They want to make sure that nothing goes wrong. So they, they assign these guards to guard him. Uh, look at the next verse. Look at the next verse. Suddenly an angel, see how God, when, when God wants to move immediately, rapidly, instantly, suddenly, God rarely uses man. You'll find that throughout the scripture. When God wants to move immediately, rapidly, instantly, suddenly, God rolls out an angel. When you're in, in, when you're in a situation in this world where there is a need for something to happen immediately, instantly, right now, suddenly, God still rolls out his angels. So, so we see God rolling out his rolling out his, his angel, and he does it suddenly. The scripture says, suddenly an angel, an, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone, shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. He says, quick, get up. And the chains fell off Peter's wrists. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and your sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your coat around you and follow me. The angel told him, Peter follow, followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea that what this angel was doing was, re was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. Now, remember, the people of God was praying. While the people of God was praying, that all of this stuff was happening unbeknownst to the people of God. But this miracle was happening. So I want to encourage you, you keep praying, you keep trusting, you keep believing, because just because you are not seeing it, just because it has yet to manifest itself does not, does not mean is not happening. It's not happening. You know, if you want to sit around and debate and talk about angels don't exist, you go right ahead. But there are countless stories, and, and, and I've had my own encounters with angels, and after it was all over, I discovered it truly had to be an angel. The Bible speaks uh, that uh, and, and, and speaks and, and tells us that, that oftentimes in our lives, we are being entertained by an angel and we don't even know it. Now, an angel can come in many shapes and forms. Uh, oftentimes when God used angels on this earth, you know, he, he dress them up to look like regular people. And we think, absolutely nothing of it. And when they complete their assignment, they disappear and you will not be able to track them down. You can do all you can. You will never be able to track them down because they don't live here. This is not their home. Okay. They, they work, they work for the kingdom of God. They come, they come in, they complete their assignment, and they get out. They, they, they get out. And if you pay attention and look very careful, you will discover that there are angels 
around you. And they're waiting for assignments from God. And here we see here why the, why the believers were praying, while the people of God was praying, God was working behind the scene on their behalf. I often like to say that God has angels assigned to every one of us. You say, who? Me? Yes, there's an angel or multiple angels assigned to you. But the more you make requests of God, the busy they become. In the, in the book of Genesis, there's, some, there, there's a man by the name of Jacob. Jacob witnessed something uh, that many of the ancient prophets uh, of God never seen before. But Jacob witnessed angels going up, climbing up a ladder and going up to heaven. He saw angels going up and he saw angels going down. The angels that were going up, they were taking up our prayers and our heartfelt requests to God. The angels coming down, they were bringing down the messages from God. They're bringing down the blessings of God. And so the, the more you communicate with God, the more active your angels are. The less you communicate with God, the less your angels. Some of our angels, I like saying, give me something to do, you know. I don't want my angel to be sitting down somewhere sort of twiddling his thumb saying, when is Kelvin gonna give me something to do? I want something to do. I really want something to do. Give me a request that I can take to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Give me something, give me something big that I can take to him. So you don't want your angels getting bored. How to, how to prevent your angels from being bored? You make it your priority to, to, to forever and continuously be at your throne room of your throne room of grace. Remember what the Apostle Paul uh, reminded us of. He told us to uh, you know to pray without ceasing, to continuously, pray. So we continuously pray. We keep those angels busy. So when they begin to pray, God began to activate uh, his angels and he send this angel down uh, to uh, communicate. But look at verse nine again. Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea what, uh, what the angel was doing was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and the second guard and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself. All kind of supernatural things were happening here. Even the, even the gate, I mean, and this is, this is ancient, ancient times when they didn't have remotes. You know, I, I come home, I hit a remote and my garage door open. And then I hit another button and my garage door closed. Okay. Uh, they didn't have uh, they didn't have those remotes. They didn't have them, but well, God still had one. So notice by when they got to the gate, the gate opened all by itself. You know, I don't I don't need to go and see a Halloween flick to like, man, this is cool. <laughs> man, this is this is cool. I'm at the gate, and even the gate is opening. Uh, all by itself. First Peter gets startled by an angel and the angel escorts him out of prison. And then the gate opens and the, the gate opens and, and, and Peter uh, Peter walks through walks through it. Again, look at verse, they, they passed the first and the second guard and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Again, back to my back to my original statement. When an angel finishes what they've been sent to do, 
they're out. They, they get up out of there. Uh, angels aren't there to be, at, be answering a bunch of questions or whatever. Angels are there to just accomplish what the Lord told them to do, and they get out. They ain't got time to reason with you. They ain't got time for you to sit around and say, this can't be true. I, uh, something's wrong here. This, this ain't real. This is a, this got to be a dream. Uh, let me touch you because I don't think you're real. They ain't got time for all of that. They get the, they take care of the business of the father. And once the business of the father is executed, they're out of there. So notice it say that the angel left. The angel didn't have time to have any other conversations, but the angel like, okay, I got you to where you need to be. Look at verse 11. Then Peter came to himself and said, so what, 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 what I imagine Peter had to do, you know, sometimes when you're, when you're having these dreams and you're having these things and it's like this out of box stuff and you're like, well, I got to make sure this is all real. So, you know, one thing you want to pinch yourself and you want to smack yourself. You want to make sure, you know, is this really happening? Am I, you know, am I, am I free? You know, when I went to sleep, I was in chains. There were chains on my hands. There were chains on my feet. There were guards around me. Uh, where are the chains? And, and so the scripture says, then, then Peter came to himself and said, now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent an angel and rescued me from Herod clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. See, even, even, even Peter is like, this is just too good to be true. You know, if, if, if you live long enough and continue to focus on God, you will experience and you will see some things that's too good to be true. And God will do it. God will show it. God will show himself to you. The Bible said, if you seek God with all your heart, you will find him. God will, God will show himself uh, to you. But, but, I, but I love this passage of scripture. I got, I, I got to read it again. If I don't read it again, I'm going to start shouting. And this, this Bible study is going to turn into a, a church meeting. <laughs> uh, then Peter came to himself. Then Peter came to himself. He came to the realization that what he experienced was a supernatural miracle. He came to himself. He came to his, 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 his physical self. And, 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 and with his own words, he recognized that God sent an angel to rescue him. God sent an angel to rescue him. Look at, look at verse 12. When this had when this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. They gathered and were praying. This is a trivial question. Uh, get ready to open up your mic if you got the answer. Who were they praying for? Who were they praying for? Drop Peter. it real quick. Peter. Peter. They were still praying for Peter. Here's another question. How fast did God react to their request? Instantly. Instantly. Certainly. Immediately. Quickly. While they were praying. Now, this is some hard teaching here, okay? Because if they were praying that God would release Peter, would you think that they would believe that God would release Peter? 
Now, 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 check this out. They're praying. They're in a prayer. They're in their prayer room. They're praying. They're they're pleading the blood of Jesus. They're praying, Lord, move. They're 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 praying, Lord, we need a uh an an on time. We need a miracle, Lord God. We need you to do it right now, right now, right now. While they were praying, praying, guess what happened? Peter knocks at the door. Knock, 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 knock. Peter knocks at the at, at the at the at the outer entrance, and a servant named R Rhonda Roll came up. to answer the door. Okay, came to came to answer the door. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was overjoyed. She ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. Now, you can almost envision, you can almost envision they're praying and they hear the knock. She leaves the prayer gathering and she goes and opens the door and she sees Peter there, you would think that she would invite Peter in. Why do you think she did not invite Peter in? She probably thought it was a ghost. Thought it was a ghost? Uh, very good. Oh, oh she was, was so excited. Yeah, so excited? Okay, give me another one. Give me another one. These are good. Give me another one. She was in disbelief. In disbelief? Yeah, give me another one. Give me another good one. They're all good. Give me another good one. Oh, all right, two more. She was caught up in the spirit. She was caught up in the spirit. Okay, caught up in the spirit. Okay, that's a good one. Uh, Does it show we have help, like whatever we have? All yeah, of us. yeah. Look at verse fourteen. When she recognized, when no. she recognized Peter's voice, what, look what it says. She was so look at all of it. overjoyed. She ran back when without it opening down. it and exclaimed, "Peter is at the door." Now they're praying. They're like, praying. They Peter is at the door. Look I at four hundred something dollars. Yeah, look at look at verse look at verse fifteen, look at verse fifteen uh, with me real quick. No, because I sweat. Verse verse, verse fifteen it worked out this morning. Yeah, look at verse fifteen. Uh, ver, 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 verse fifteen. This is what they say. You are out of your mind. I mean, this is what they. This is what they tell her. This is what they tell the dear sister that that opened the door. Say, uh, my sister, you must have went and had a drink. <laughs> my sister, what are you smoking? My sister, you are you're not in your right mind. You 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 know. Let us take your temperature. You you can't be feeling right. And so. So they tell her, you're out of your mind, they told her, verse 15. When she asked, when she kept insisting that it was so, they said, it must be his angel. Must be his angel. Got to be his angel. See, they even they recognize that angels disguise themselves looking like a regular human person is oh, I got to be his angel but uh but but Peter is in prison he's in chains he's bonded up he can't not go and do anything else look at verse uh 16 but Peter kept on knocking the brother still at the door while they're sitting there debating uh it can't really be Peter. That's not happening. Now, they were praying. The very thing that they were praying for, guess what? 
was at the door. Was at the door, but but they didn't. But but they did not believe it. The very thing that they were praying for, that they but they, as earnestly they were praying with all their heart, soul, and mind. But they like, wait a minute. Uh, yeah, we're praying for Peter. We're praying for his deliverance. We're praying for his release or whatever. But what if God decided to do it just as they request? They requested. And, 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 and here we have it. So Peter's still knocking. Peter's still knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hands for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Peter tells him the whole supernatural story that that while you were praying, that suddenly, immediately, quickly, instantly, God moved. God moved be, be, because you were praying. So Peter motioned with his hands for them to be quiet and describe how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Now, once they finally learned what was going on, once they finally learned what was what what was really what was really happening, a praise meeting broke out in that place. Um, the people couldn't retain themselves, so so Peter had to say, "Okay, now calm down, now now calm down, now now calm down, now now calm down." Now, calm down. You know how you 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 get people so riled up and, and so excited, but but there is more that need to be said, that more that need to be presented. That uh, uh, you haven't heard the full story yet. There is much much more. So Peter brings every calm, get everybody calmed down. The scripture doesn't say how long it took Peter to calm the people down. But I think if you and I was part of a prayer gathering and we were praying and touching and agreeing, believing that 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 our loved one will be healed from cancer, be healed from some terminal illness, be healed from COVID uh, COVID nineteen virus, be, be 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 healed for 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 something, and God instantly heals them, and they show up and say, "Look, here's the doctor records. Here's the X ray. It's gone. It's gone." I I don't think that we would sit around uh, real quiet. And so this is, sort of, this is sort of how it was. So, so Peter calms them down and, and he calms them down and, he, and he, he wants to share with them what really happened. Uh, look, at, look, look at verse number uh, 18, verse number 18. Uh, no, we'll go all the way back to, uh, let's go all the way back to verse 17. Uh, Peter motioned with his hands for them to be quiet and describe how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this. He tells them, I want you to tell everybody about this, he said. And then he, and then he left for another place. The scripture says, in the morning, there was no more, there was no uh, small commotion among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. There was no small commotion among them. Uh, it, was, it was crazy. So after Herod had, had a thorough search made for him, and did not find him, he cross-examined the guards and ordered that they be executed. Because based on his investigation, what took place was impossible. What take, took place was impossible. So when you pray, you want to always believe that if God tells the angel, do it now, get ready. And that can happen 
to any of us. That can happen tonight, next week, anytime. That just understand that God has angels that he can put on and they're waiting and they are and they can be assigned on red alert to come and rescue you. You may be stressed out. You may be uh, uh, distorted or uh, dis feeling destroyed uh, or overwhelmed by the situation and the circumstances of this work. And God can send an angel down for your rescue immediately. 911 has nothing on how fast an angel can come your way. So be encouraged and knowing because the scripture tells us that while they were praying, God dispatches an angel to come to Peter's deliverance, come to Peter's rescue. Now, what, what I'd like to hear from, uh, from most of you, hopefully all of you, before we wrap it up, we only, only have just a few more minutes left, about five, six more minutes left before we wrap up. But I want to hear uh, just a statement from each one of you. What intrigued you, what interests you the most about this miracle that God performed, utilizing the angel in the life of Peter? Who would like to be the first to go? Go right ahead. We're running out of time. Next, Fast, go right ahead. The, the quickness that he responded and that God responded to this task. Sometimes when you pray, you don't get an immediate response. And it was, this was amazing that how fast, as they were praying, God had already answered their prayers. Amen, amen. Beautiful, my brother, beautiful. Next. Next person, go right ahead. Just unmute your mic real quick and go right ahead. Hallelujah. Do we have another one? I think just the angels being dispatched um, to to Peter just shows. I think just shows me that it could, that could happen to anyone. Um, but if we don't believe, if we don't believe that it's you know God putting into place, you know putting certain things into place, then we're, we're unable to carry out whatever his will is. Yeah. So to, to me, what I'm walking away with is how, how do I make sure that I'm in tune to be able to recognize an angel in the midst? Yeah, amen, beautiful, beautiful. And you know, sometimes, you know, God loves to make, um, you know, sometimes although we go through motions and, you know, we're not feeling it uh, completely, but we feel is the right thing, but God, God will make a believer out of you. And uh, uh, you can see that Peter wasn't uh, quite there, but at the end, uh, God made a believer out of him and he made a believer out of those that were earnestly praying for him. Very good, very good. Next, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Maybe we can hear for that young lady in Orlando, Florida. Go right ahead. <laughs> you said what was uh, the favorite part? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I liked the ask and you shall receive because sometimes I don't really want to ask God for too much if he's already blessed me enough. But that was good to hear. Very good, very good, beautiful. Yeah, God loves the, uh, uh, you know, I don't want to call him a uh, a, a sugar daddy. <laughs> uh, they don't they'll use that term any, you know, they don't use that term anymore, sugar daddy. Uh, but but he really is a sugar daddy, and uh, he he wants us to. He wants us to be greedy. Uh, he wants us to, the, the scripture says, is any man lacketh the wisdom, let him ask it of God, who giveth to all men, the scripture says, liberally, 
and he uh, he upbraideth not, meaning he doesn't get upset that you're constantly asking for more, asking for more, asking for more. In fact, he loves to give to his people. Beautiful, beautiful. Next, go right ahead. Next, go right ahead, please. If we have angels following us around. We just uh, ask the angels to, to uh, uh, take a message or what, what's, the, what's the story with that? Yeah, we the, ask that? yeah, the we... process, yeah, yeah uh, good, good question, awesome question. The, the, the process is, is, is never to make a request of the angel. The, we make a request, we make a request to the Lord and the Lord assigns, the Lord gives the angel the instructions. Uh, and so the Lord may tell the angel, you know, wait, or the Lord may tell the angel now. Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you all, have, you know, I've been, been, been driving for, uh, uh, what, about 40 something years. And I've had many very close calls with uh, someone hitting me and what, what have you. Uh, I mean, within, within inches. And, and I'm, I'm sure what I'm saying, uh, Mina, you can chime in as well. Now, you can make a decision and say, well, I was lucky, <laughs> okay? Or you can make a decision and say, the, the Lord intervened. I mean, you, did, you decide on that. But, 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 but what if uh, uh, the Lord, you know, predestined and saw this event coming and made sure that you did not get harmed? And, 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 and so, often in, so often in this life that we have these close calls and we, uh, the Lord shows us a miracle right in front of our own eyes and we, we reduce it down. But again, to answer your question, uh, Brother Bobby, our, we, never, we never pray uh, to an angel. We pray to God and, and God, the scripture says, uh, the Lord Jesus, he intercedes on our behalf. And so if it's, if it's an assignment of an angel, he uses an angel. If, an, if the assignment is for somebody to do something on this earth, he utilizes, he utilizes them. But it all, it, it all is uh, orchestrated by the Lord. He is the one that works behind the scene. He's pulling all the strings and what have you, but our assignment, whatever assignment is needed for us on, on this earth, uh, he does that. Uh, our, our role is to ask of him. And- So the, um, the angel is basically a, just standing by for instructions from, 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 uh, from God, he just yes. standing by. Yes. And when, when the time comes, that's when he reacts. Is that yes. how it goes? Yes, sir. So, okay. so we don't want, you know, if, if you want your angels just sitting on the bench waiting, um, I have one request of you, and I've said this before, I continue to say it. If you don't want to keep, keep your angels busy, send them my way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'll put them to, I'll put them to work. Okay. But. But all joking aside, you know, that's why it's, um, it's, it's so important. That's why we, we, we want to pray. We want to spend time in the spiritual realm and we want to connect ourselves with uh, these uh, spiritual angels or spiritual uh, uh, beings uh, that have a role and a, and a, and a function on this on this earth and so we want to keep them we want to keep them busy uh next next any anyone else anyone else have a thought uh go right ahead something that intrigue you the most well what i like about um the people no matter how impossible the situation looked with peter 
they never stopped praying. They continued praying, praying and believing, even though they didn't know when it was going to happen or how long it was going to take. But they continued pray, praying fervently, believing, you know, God can do the impossible. Amen. Because we know the other, you know, they had already done, um, they already killed the other brother uh, that was with Peter. So we know that uh, clearly Peter was, Peter was next. Peter was next. But it, but it had not it been for some praying folks that got God's attention. And, uh, and that's what we want. We want, want folks that will continue to pray and get the, uh, get the attention, get the attention of God. Very good. Anyone else? Anyone else? Some good stuff this evening. And another thing is that when we don't get immediate response, like Peter did, we have to constantly keep just praying and watching, praying and watching, and God will eventually answer us. Amen. 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 That is, uh, you know, th that is so important. You know, praying is, you know, praying is hard work because, um, uh, because praying is uh, is an activity of the uh, called the activity of the redundant. It is something that we we do on a regular basis. We we do it uh, we do it continuously. The apostle Paul said, "Pray without ceasing." So the 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 more you spend time in prayer, uh, the uh, the more you'll be able to talk about the results of prayer. Uh, Many people don't pray because they, they pray and they don't see any results. And it's only because we don't understand prayer. But, uh, but prayer should be part of your daily life. It, it's, you know, going before God and, and praying for others and praying for yourself and, and believing God for the for, for, for the impossible. And I've seen God do a, uh, some miraculous uh, things in my life that would, you know, tie us up for hours just talking about it. And every child of God, if you continue to pray and believe God, you're going to eventually have your own testimonies that you would be able to share with others how God moved in a miraculous way in your life. But you want to pray you want to be consistent in prayer because there are requests that you will make known of God that God will instantly suddenly and immediately answer I'm going to share this little real brief story and we are we're we're out of here there is a sister that uh, uh, was a member of our church some years ago um uh, she was, uh, she had become HIV positive and her, her uh, HIV positive uh, resulted in her uh, developing uh, age, uh, AIDS, I'm sorry, AIDS. Um, and, um, and so she was at uh, uh, this uh, hospital in Coconut Grove, I can't, I think it's Mercy Hospital. In, in Coconut Grove, and they instructed the family to reach out to the their uh, the clergy to come and and have a, a final prayer uh, prayer of her final rites over her. So they called us. We went we went down, and we had prayer. And so as I got there, the doctor comes out and he says that you know nothing looks good. That all her her vitals were going down and. Uh, and so I was invited in to kind of, you know, say this final prayer. So I remember telling the doctor that I don't do final prayers, that I, I don't care what, how bad or dim the situation is, but I pray for miracles. And so, so I prayed over her and uh, prayed God that God would touch and heal her and pull her out of that situation and said my benedictions and I left. A week later, um, we either reached out to them or they called us and they informed us that um, that our dear sister walked. Uh, they, uh, she came in the hospital in a stretcher 
but she walked out of the hospital and got in a car and went home. And that's been maybe uh, seven, eight, seven, eight years ago, but our dear sister is still around. Some of you remember her, uh, sister uh, Sandra White, when she uh, comes by to visit the church, we often have her come up to, and testify. But that was one of those prayers where God moved instantly uh, because uh, something had to happen instantly because she was going down. All of her vitals were dropping and she was going down. And so God had a plan and a purpose to continue to use her in this, in this life. And so God moved in a miraculous way. And, God, and if, so if God can do it for her and God can do it for Peter, God can do it for me. And yes, God can do it for you. And I want everyone, if you believe God can do it for you, would you just say amen? Can you say amen? Amen. 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 Don't be, don't be bashful. Can you say amen? Do you believe God can do it for you? Open up your mouth and say amen. <laughs> amen. And amen. Again, wanna uh, wanna thank you all so much. If I missed some one of you that wanted to say something before we close, you you open up your mic right now and say something before we close out in prayer. Anyone, anyone, anyone have a final thought? Just say something real quick, real quick. Uh, seeing none, again, wanna thank you. Uh, we will we will finish up uh, this chapter uh, next uh, next Tuesday evening. Uh, if, uh, if, if, uh, if time would, uh, would allow you, you can go ahead and, um, and read the remaining of, of chapter 12 in preparation for our study next week. I pray God will bless you for the remaining of this week. Uh, you, you tell somebody, tell somebody about the Lord. Amen. And look forward to connecting with you as we come online this coming Sunday. We are uh, working very hard at, at getting more people involved in our Sunday uh, virtual service. And one way that we can do it by having each of you uh, send a link, link out to a dozen or so individuals and get them to join us while we are live in service so that we are able to spread the message of Jesus Christ to everyone in this virtual, in this virtual world that we are operating in. So we're gonna close out in prayer uh, right now. We thank you for your uh, mercy and your grace. I'm gonna have my dear wife, if she is still connected with us, I'm gonna have her to close us out in God's watchful care, amen, amen. Man, dear Heavenly Father, we are so grateful and thankful, dear Lord God. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, dear Lord God. and. I know that we receive it in the mighty name of Jesus, dear Lord God. We know that you can do all things, dear Heavenly Father. You can perform all miracles. You can do all the things that we thought that can never be done, dear Lord Jesus. So, dear Heavenly Father, we just ask, dear Lord God, that you continue to go before us, dear Lord God, as we continue to trust and believe in your word, dear Lord God. We thank you for this time of study studying your word, dear Heavenly Father. Cover each and every one of us here tonight and our families, dear Lord Jesus. We thank you for in Jesus' name, amen. amen.